Hello everyone, it's Space Chaser again. Welcome to another model review video. I recently reviewed the Britbus Alexander R-Type. I did a Scania and delivery of Black Prince. And I did promise that if I got one of the Dublin bus versions, I would do a separate review of that one because the Dublin bus casting was uh, quite substantially different. Well, I've managed to acquire one. So in this one, we're going to look at the Dublin bus style Alexander R-Type as uh, produced by Britbus. So there is the model we're looking at. I'll get it out of the box and then we'll get started. So there it is. So Britbus ceased trading in October 2017. But despite that, the moulds have survived and they're still available for special commissions. I'm not quite sure who produces them nowadays. Obviously, it's not the original Britbus. I don't know if it's a restarted company or if it's just some individual who's got the moulds. As I said, they are available for special commissions, so you still find them. There have been some Scania Omnideckers produced, there have been some MCW Metro riders, and there have been some of these uh, Dublin-style Alexander R-types. And indeed, it's one that we've got that's been produced after Britbus uh, actually finished. So Britbus themselves produced nine releases of this uh, Dublin-style Alexander R-type between December 2004 and April 2011. Uh, this woman that we're reviewing today, catalogue number WD001, was actually one of the commissions that appeared after Britbus had ceased. It was released in February 2018. It was commissioned by Adrian Lemon, who I believe is based in Dublin, and it was limited to 504 pieces. Uh, there is a chance this one might have been produced by Britbus themselves, because uh, obviously it's only a short delay between them actually ceasing and this being released, so it may well have been produced by the original Britbus rather than their successors. Um, up to press, as I'm doing this, in October 2024, there have been five um, special commissions after Britbus ceased. There's been a Dublin Ghost Tour bus that was done in 2019. There's been one in the Airport Express livery that was done in 2020. There were some unpainted kits in 2021 and 2022. More of those when we get to the price bit later on. And then there was one in an Irish Rail advert in 2023. And of course, as I say, this one in 2018 uh, in wedding bus livery. So what I'll do, I'll run briefly through the history of Dublin Buses Olympians. We'll have a quick look at uh, the wedding buses and what they were all about. And I'll go through the history of this vehicle that uh, is modelled 90D1039. And then we'll have the all important look around the uh, model. Britbus were a manufacturer that caused me some frustration because um, they went all out to try and make the models more accurate. I mentioned when I did the review of the Scania R-Type that there were five different variations of the casting. I've found a sixth since then. Um, but basically the UK version, there were um, single door versions of the Scania and the Leyland or Volvo Olympian, which uh, were different castings and a different back as I covered in the Scania review. Uh, there was also a single door Scania with a split level entrance step that was part of the casting. So that was a different casting in itself. There were two of the UK version of the dual door bus, uh, one with a front staircase and one with a centre staircase. And then there's the Dublin bus version with a centre staircase. But it's um, substantially different to the UK release. The emergency exit's in a different place for a start. And the steps, as you can see, are striped rather than being uh, split level on the uh, UK version. So there are at least six versions of the casting. Um, on top of that, the uh, lower front panel and the uh, rear panels there are interchangeable on some of the vehicles. So you can do different variations um, on those as well. So, you know, there's quite a lot. They put a lot of effort in. A lot of manufacturers would just have done two castings, uh, one single door, one dual door, and just basically fudged it, you know, done a bit of printing here and there to try and make it look different. But Britbus went all out to try and make them accurate. And the reason they caused me frustration is that they tend to be let down by silly mistakes, um, as we'll see when we look around it. So Dublin Buses Olympians. Um, from the 1940s, Transport in Ireland was nationalised under... CIE, uh, Chorus Umper Eran, basically uh, translating to Ireland's Transport System or Irish Transport Company, something like that. And they ran the trains and most of the buses. Uh, until 1987, they ran them uh, just under their own name, CIE, the vehicles carried CIE logos. In 1987, it was split into three business units. You got Irish Rail that ran the trains, Bus Eran that ran most of the buses, apart from the ones in Dublin City and the Dublin City routes, which were run by Dublin Bus, and this is a Dublin Bus vehicle. Until the 1970s, the double deck requirement in the CIE fleet had been met mainly by Leyland, 
uh, latterly with the Atlantean. The bodies were built locally, first by CIE themselves and then by Van Hill McArdle. But uh, they got dissatisfied with Leyland, as did many customers in the 70s. The chassis often turned up late. There were long delays in delivery. Uh, when they did arrive and went out on the road, they tended to be quite unreliable. And then buses finished up, parked up for ages, waiting for spare parts to come across from the UK. Leyland weren't really interested. There was no um, customer care or after-sales service, as we'd know it nowadays. So basically, CIE went off on an excursion to commission their own vehicles with Bombardier and later GAC or GAC, as uh, whichever you want to call it. And they built a family of vehicles. The double-deckers for Dublin bus services were Bombardier double-deckers with uh, Detroit diesel two-stroke engines. But by the end of the 80s in the Dublin bus era, um, they were buying off-the-shelf buses again or looking at doing so. They took an MCW Metrobus and a Leyland Olympian on demonstration and the Olympian won out. But uh, the demonstrator bus had Leyland's own bodywork, whereas Dublin bus, when they bought some Olympians, specified uh, bodywork by Alexander. It wasn't built at the main Falkirk factory, it was built by the uh, Belfast factory that Alexander had at that time to uh, support Irish jobs. And this is the uh, style of vehicle that they produced. There were three um, classifications in Dublin service. The first ones delivered in 1990 up to uh, 1993 were badged as Leylands and had Cummins engines and they were classified RH by Dublin bus. Uh, from 1994 to 1996 they were rebadged as Volvos, the Olympian was rebadged as a Volvo product. So the Volvo badged but still Cummins engine ones were classified RA. And then from 1997 onwards uh, Volvo phased out the Cummins engine in the Olympian and they put Volvo engines in. So the Volvo badged and Volvo engine ones were classified RV. The RAs and RVs both had square headlights and fog lights at the front um, and the RVs had a one-piece engine cover rather than the two-piece that the RHs and RAs had. It will come as no surprise to learn that Britbus uh, modelled those variations so they did one with the square headlights on the front and the uh, single-piece um, engine cover as well. So they've done all three classes in their range. The last RVs were delivered in 2000, the last one RV630 in October 2000 was the last Olympian to be delivered anywhere. It wasn't the last one built, the last ones built went to Yorkshire Coastliner, but um, the last one to uh, actually enter service was a Dublin bus vehicle. Two years afterwards in 2002, routine withdrawals of the 1990 buses began. Uh, Dublin bus were aiming for a 12 year life, so as I said they were withdrawn the first batch in 2002. Some of them remained with Dublin bus, driver trainers, tour buses, things like that. Some became open top, some were closed top still. Uh, some of them were sold to independents in Ireland, particularly in the Dublin area. I think Jewel Way of Rathcool spring to mind as somebody who operated ex-Dublin bus Olympians. Uh, five went to the Isle of Man, where they looked really good in Isle of Man Transports, then current red and cream livery. But the vast majority of them were sold to Ensign Bus, the dealers in Perfley in Essex in the UK. Um, and they took most of them and sold them on to UK operators, mainly independents, but over the years some of the bigger companies uh, got some as well. Um, Transdev got some various uh, members, Leylands and Volvos, as a result of takeovers, and uh, four of the Isle of Man ones ended up with Go North East after the Isle of Man finished with them. But that set the precedent for the uh, later batches as they came out of service. Some of them stayed with Dublin Bus in various roles. Uh, some went to Irish independence, but the vast majority went to Ensign and were sold in the UK. And you can still, as I do this in October 2024, find the odd one um, on school service with various operators up and down the UK. There are still a few in service, um, many of the later Volvos, of course. So what was a wedding bus? Well, um, Dublin Bus found themselves doing wedding hires, as uh, do many bus operators. And what they used to do was just basically find a relatively smart example of the fleet, not too many battered panels or scratches, give it a wash and put some ribbons on. In 1990 they decided they could probably do a bit better, so they uh, painted a bus in um, a special wedding hire livery. Uh, the first one to be done was one of the legendary Bombardiers, KD366, in May 1990. Uh, shortly afterwards they repainted a fairly new uh, Leyland Olympian, uh, RH3. And this vehicle that Britbus had modelled, RH39, um, was delivered new in uh, the wedding hire livery. 
Uh, I should mention that inside they were just normal buses. The standard Dublin livery at the time was two-tone green and the buses had a green interior um, to sort of match it. And they were just standard buses inside. Indeed, when they weren't required for wedding hires, they were sent out onto normal service. So there was nothing different about the inside of it. It was just the external livery that was uh, changed. The wedding hire fleet was kept fairly up to date. They uh, replaced the buses um, quite often. So after about four years or so, the uh, Leyland Olympians um, were replaced with newer Volvo versions, which in turn were replaced by Alexander ALX 400 bodied Volvo B7TLs and then Wright Geminis. The last wedding hire bus was um, a Gemini, an 08 plate Gemini, and that was withdrawn in June 2017. In more recent times, um, route franchising and tendering has come to the Dublin area, a bit like the London thing where operators put into work routes or groups of routes. So you've got people like Go Ahead Island running there now as well. Uh, Dublin bus haven't got the monopoly anymore. Um, and they don't really, they couldn't really justify the separate wedding fleet in the, in the modern climate. Um, I believe they don't really do wedding hires that much anymore. They tend to leave it to the local independents to do them. So it did die out, but it was, uh, for 27 years, it was uh, a feature of the Dublin bus fleet, the special wedding hire vehicles. So RH39, the fleet number, registration 90D1039. Uh, just for anybody not familiar with Irish registration numbers, they are pretty simple. The uh, first numbers um, indicate the year it was new, so 90, 1990. The letter or letters is the area it was registered in, so D for Dublin. And then the 1039 is just its unique identifier, and it's as simple as that. So the rail bus was delivered in October 1990 to Fibsborough Garage, uh, just west of Dublin city centre. I believe it worked from Fibsborough for its entire Dublin bus career, um, as far as I know. In around 1994, it was painted into normal fleet colours, which by the time were by that time were blue and cream with an orange band, and it went into just ordinary use. It was withdrawn in July 2002 and put into storage. It was sold to Ensign uh, a little bit later on and re-registered H960PTW. In December 2003, it was sold to Kimes of Forkingham in Lincolnshire, who uh, re-registered it a, um, a month later, January 2004, as TAZ4062. And it worked for Kimes until 2013, August 2013. When it was sold to fellow Lincolnshire operator Brylane of Boston and they withdrew it and sold it for scrap in March of 2015 after a very creditable 25 year operating life. So that's the history, let's have a look at the model and we'll start as always with the fronts. Um, actually before I do that I'll just cover a couple of general points on these vehicles. Um, first of all as I mentioned on the review of the Scania I think the windows are slightly too deep, slightly too big. They did have huge windows, these buses, but not quite as huge as this. Uh, the step up from the bottom of the side windows to the uh, bottom of the front one is prototypical. But I think the bottom of the side window should be about where the level of the uh, front window is, and the front window should be slightly higher up. The uh, bottom of it should be slightly higher up. So I think they are slightly too big. But you can make your own mind up on that one. Uh, the second point is the sit of it. The Brit bus models never quite seem to sit correctly on the uh, on the base. If you see what I mean, looks a little bit uh, too high, perhaps. But anyway, let's crack on with the look around. So the front dome looks uh, quite good. The shape is correct. The shape of the front window is correct as well, whether or not it is too big. You've got the uh, dividing bar that's part partly moulded in. It's picked out in silver, but it is moulded into it. And you can see the uh, handrails inside behind as well. The between decks panel is good. Uh, this one's got congratulations and best wishes on the blind. It's set up for a wedding hire, as you can see. But as I said, they did carry normal um, destination blinds when they were in ordinary service as well. Um, as far as I remember, it's a long time since I took one of these apart, but I think the this panel and the windscreen are one piece, so they come off, and then you could stick um, new destinations behind them if you wanted to with the destination blind is behind the glazing as it should be. Um, I've seen some pictures on the internet of somebody who's just put the blind on the outside if you don't fancy taking it apart, if you wanted normal blinds in it. But uh, yeah, you've got that option, but it looks pretty good there. Um, the windscreen, Dublin bus uh, specified a curved windscreen to try and cut down the reflections from the interior lights uh, at night time, and that's nicely modelled there. The shape and size is good. Again, the dividing bar is uh, partly moulded and picked out in silver. Got the separate wipers there which look pretty decent. 
there's uh, obviously been a sticker on the rail one facing into the bus and you can see the back of it there i don't know what it said in, in real life um, inside you can see the mirrors there the difference to the uh, uk release the uk release a single arm they've got, got an arm at the top and they hang down from it uh, these are double armed they've got an arm at top and bottom they look very good and because they are double armed they are very robust as well they don't really move when you touch them the lower panel looks good the um, indicators and the headlights etc there's an attempt to make them look like they're uh, sort of glass the grill looks good leyland badge printed on it there and the dublin bus db um, logos as well all looking pretty good as i said later volvos had square headlights and fog lights and britbus did model that variation registration plate printed there it is a bit of a modeler's license that one um the rail bus had just a plain white plate with the uh, the number printed on it in black it didn't have the embellishments this one's got a european flag with the irl island lettering um, underneath and also the uh, belia aha cliff or clear uh, letter in dublin city in other words um, above it uh, nice embellishments but the real vehicle as i said didn't have it just had a plain uh, black and white plate i suspect they've been done because it was commissioned by somebody in the dublin area just a bit of municipal pride there around to the side the general impression of it is uh, pretty decent uh, you'll notice the windows aren't fitting very well i caught them as i took it out of the box and they pushed in slightly which is not brilliant um, sometimes brit bus the build quality wasn't quite as it should be and the windows weren't really very tight so they are pushed in a little bit as you can see but the cove panels are a nice shape and um, the windows the dublin bus specified these uh, two hoppers per window um, half and half and that's been modeled well between next panel um quite plain as it was on the real thing the wedding poster is nicely printed the uh, route number blind the side one and the rear one on these buses in real life was electronic so it could be set from the cab as you can see it's been set to blank um, which it would have been for a wedding hire uh, just so there weren't any random numbers or not so random numbers perhaps uh, appearing on the blind the doors look good there's a bit of relief to them not just printed on um, they look nice again the little individual handrails behind as well which look good uh, the steps are nice as well they're about the right thickness and there is a bit of relief to them so that's good the uh, dublin bus print in there the indicator is slightly raised on this one on the uk ones it's printed on but there is a bit of relief to it which is nice and similarly the emergency door controls there's a bit they're sort of molded in as well and picked out Legal lettering nicely done there. Sorry, just trying to get a bit more light on the subject. I didn't realise it had gone dark. The uh, grill detail there is printed on. It doesn't look particularly brilliant, to be fair, but um, done like that because the Volvos had different grills. Uh, the wheels look okay. Um, in real life, the wedding fleet did have wheel embellishes on, which this has got, but they looked a bit more chunky and angular in uh, real life, not quite as rounded as this one. But it's not a bad attempt uh, the back wheel they had a wheel disc on but you wouldn't expect brick bus to put that on just for this one release release um, unfortunately the back wheel isn't particularly great on it it's um you know it looks passable but it's a little bit too rounded it doesn't quite capture the look of an olympian wheel and it is a bit disappointing that's what i mean by i get frustrated by brick bus because they went all out to do different castings so that everything was as detailed as possible but they let themselves down by this kind of little, not really realistic looking wheel, and by the build quality issues with the looser windows. Um, as you can see, the front upper screen is sticking out as well. It's not fitting properly. And just stuff like that tends to let them down after all that effort. Uh, we go on to the back. It is pretty good. It should have a little vent there, um, which most of the releases had it printed on. Um, I've looked at photos of the other ones and had it printed it's been missed off this one which is a bit of a shame because it gives you an expanse of um, white paint but the uh, molding line that was present on the real thing is uh, cast in as you can see the emergency exit is good um, the Falkirk built buses went onto the higher set um, emergency exit window as the Scania that I reviewed had but uh, Belfast continued with the original style of our type um, emergency window set lower down and slightly bigger and uh, they've really captured the sort of chunky and utilitarian look of it in this model it's really good uh, the between next panel this bit uh, is interchangeable they did a release that was a dublin bus training vehicle that had the um, route number blind panelled over um, so they did that as well but you've got the route number blind 
uh, behind the glazing again it's set to blank on this one uh, this batch had traditional white on black rear registration plates which is modeled there again behind the glazing which looks really good lower deck window looks reasonable um, the engine cover is nice it's supposed to open but this one doesn't um, i tried to push it out a little bit with a small screwdriver but the whole thing started to bulge out but it's supposed to open to reveal the engine behind the lights there is a bit of relief to them but they mainly rely on paints and they are a little bit too bright they might benefit from a little bit of either satin or matte varnish to turn them down the rear bumper looks pretty decent get around to the offside similar to the near side really the windows are not fitting particularly well uh, and i haven't caught those so that's how it's come Cove panels pretty good the between decks panels um, nice as well printing of the wedding bus advert really really good but the Dublin bus name in Irish as it was on the offside bus aha clear again the uh, vents are printed on they don't look particularly great but uh, you know they're passable from a normal viewing distance again slightly dodgy looking rear wheel not too bad front wheel one of the silly mistakes that I was talking about is here on the emergency door as you can see the recess for the handle and the handle itself are printed on but they've put them in completely the wrong place they should be um, across to this side and up a bit so about here where my finger is instead they've put it smack bang in the middle of the door which looks ridiculous um, and it's just one of those daft mistakes that could easily be avoided other than that pretty good again the indicator part of the uh, casting sticking out a little bit as it should be driver signaling window looks good um, printed on but looks fairly effective nothing to report on the roof um, the real R-Type had a really simple roof, which this model has got as well. The front wheels are poseable, so you can do it as if it's steering around a corner. And if we flip it over, the chassis is nicely detailed. You've got the fuel tanks there, the air tanks. You've got a representation um, under the floor of the pipe and cable runs. You can see the engine there that should be revealed by the engine flap. Uh, the exhaust system, the transmission, all that's there. All looking pretty good the exhaust may be a little bit too bright you could do um, to paint that to a more subdued color just turn it down a little bit but yeah not too bad and we'll have a look at the interior you can see it's uh, quite nicely detailed um, you've heard of the film 50 shades of gray well Dublin buses at this time were 50 shades of green and that's well uh, captured in there the uh, seat back grab rails as you can see stick up from the seats they're not just molded onto them there is a gap between them and the seats and they're picked out in silver which looks really really nice handrails uh, just silver as they were in the rail buses a lot of people at that time were specifying um, brightly coloured handrails but not Dublin Dublin had the traditional chrome plated ones see the uh, driver's cab there just about steering wheel and such you can see the fare box sticking up as well the exact fare, fare box modelled on it really really nice to see so all in all it's not a bad model um, as i say it does get let down a little bit by um, the fact that the build quality of it's not particularly great in places um, as brit bus often weren't unfortunately so we go on to pricing how much one of these set you back well i've had a look on ebay and there's not many available to be honest it seems dublin bus collectors were quite loyal and um, they bought them and just kept them um i got this one for 35 pound 99 including postage um and as I'm doing this in October 2024, the seller's still got a few of them left at that price. The reason it was so cheap was that the um, it's been decertificated. Um, in other words, the limited edition certificate is missing from it, which takes the value down. But if you're not bothered about that, then it's a, a cheap option. As I said, there were still a couple left as I'm filming this. 35 99 including postage and packing. Next cheapest were the unbuilt kits. Um, they were 39 99 including postage. And another seller had them for, I think, 41 something. Um, basically it comes in a box like this one did it looks very much like this but it's not screwed and glued together so you can take it to pieces you get the alternative fronts in that one as well so you get the Leyland front with the round headlights or the uh, Volvo front with the square ones and you also get the different uh, rear panel the two-part grille that the RHs and RAs had and the single um, grille sorry engine cover and the single part engine cover that the RVs had so you get a choice of those that you can put in so they're a pretty good option, particularly if you record three repainter. Um, aside from that, there weren't many available at all. The most expensive one I could find was a Dublin bus green one that was eighty-one pound, uh, including postage and packing. <clears throat> but yeah, if you can find the ones um, in fleet livery, they do tend to be quite expensive. But there's not many available. Um, 
if you go on, the, on Irish eBay, you might find more. Obviously, being UK based, I've been on the UK site. Um, and I, I tried the Irish one, but um, as I went on from a UK IP address, it only showed me the same results. But yeah, there weren't many available in the UK, and as I said, they range between thirty-six pound for this one and eighty-one pound. So they are um, quite collectible and uh, quite sought after, uh, and quite expensive. It's a bit of a shame, really, because there's a lot of um, options. As I say, Ensign Bus sold these to many, many operators up and down the UK, as well as the Irish independents. So for Code 3 repainters, it's an ideal base model to do various fleets. It's just a very expensive uh, model to buy in the first place, just to uh, repaint. So we could probably do with somebody to commission a load of uh, unpainted ones or dealer white ones, you know, a big run of them. But whether that will ever happen or not is uh, a different matter. Is it worth getting? Well, yeah, it's not a bad model. Um, it suffers, as I say, from the sort of standard Britbus things that it's not particularly well put together, but it's not a bad model by any means. It's not perfect, as we've seen. But, uh, you know, Dublin bus, at the time this was delivered in 1990, they had Atlanteans with either their own or Van Hull bodies. They had um, the Bombardiers and they had these. The Atlanteans and Bombardiers, I believe you can get a kit for, but I've never actually seen one for sale anywhere. Um, I did have, at one point, um, a resin specialist CIE bodied Atlantean, but I trekked myself to it. I paid an absolute fortune for the thing and I didn't, didn't dare take it out of the box. Um, it just sat in the box. So eventually I just thought, you know what, I'm going to sell it again. So I sold it and got my money back. Because I just didn't dare touch it. I didn't dare put it on a, on a diorama or anything like that. So it is really brilliant to have a Dublin bus of that era that you can take out of its box and, you know, put on your diorama, your layout, whatever, and just handle and you're not too worried about it. So, yeah, it's uh, definitely worth buying. As I say, if you're a Code 3 repainter and you don't mind paying, you know, £36, £40 for a donor model, there's plenty of scope for you to go at. And if you're a Dublin bus collector, of course, it's a must-buy. So as always, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please hit the like button because it makes it more visible on YouTube so more people can find it and uh, watch it as you have. But thank you for watching. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye for now.